Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is OK State 56 with Big Country Gaming, and uh, today I'm going to show you guys how to edit your helmet files so that you can uh, create some really clean-looking helmets. I'm going to show you how to stencil paint onto the actual helmet themselves, selves with uh, you know some stripes or your logos or whatever, just so you can make those look really, really clean and and straight. I know that. A lot of times when you add a stripe in the actual DDS file on Photoshop or if you use some of those other programs out there that are free, um, that they're not typically straight. And uh, I know it's something that a lot of guys have struggled with. So um, we'll get started. What I've basically done is I've just I've exported a UCLA helmet that was really, really easy. Um, so this is what I've got going on right now. And this is just their white helmet. As you can see, the UCLA logo is a little bit distorted. The warning sticker, Pac-12 logo, the flag, those are all distorted because what they've done, what I think they've done is actually painted these on in um, uh, Blender. Okay, so what you'll notice is that this actually has an alpha file. So if you click that and then click the RGB, you'll notice that this is blacked out. And there's a reason for that. If you come out of here and you exit, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to reopen that file in a different way. So you're going to open as, just to prove a point. And we've got, I believe it's this guy right here. Okay, so when you open this file, it's going to give you the option to load transparency as alpha channel. Normally you want to do that, but I'm going to show you what happens when you don't. If you click OK, now the UCLA logo is gone, that Pac-12 logo, flag, warning sticker, even the bumper sticker is gone. And you'll see some transparency here as well. The reasoning for that is that when you create your alpha layer, it's actually not going to hold the same properties as what the... Um, actual helmet color or the helmet what whatever you want this helmet to look like so example this is going to be a normal gloss uh, white helmet in the game and so rather than apply the RSF values to everything on this entire thing this by making this alpha channel and blending out this part of it, you actually kind of create a second. I wouldn't call it a texture, but it gives it the look that this could be, you know, more of a matte color, or this could be more of a gloss, higher gloss, or, you know, vice versa, whichever. So it gives it a little bit more realism. Um, you don't have to be that picky. I am when it comes to what I do. So I'm going to show you guys how to do it the right way or at least the way that I believe is the right way. Um, so this is about probably a 20 minute process or so, but we will see how quickly we can get through it. So the first thing we're gonna do is exit back out of this and open it up like the original way I had it. Gonna go down. So I like to load this guy. Boom. Okay, so let's say <clears throat> Let's say we want to open a, or let's say we want to create a helmet stripe, all right? If I were, if you've ever opened up a helmet that has a helmet stripe, which I'm going to do for you right now. So this is Ohio State's helmets. And there you go. It looks not straight at all, um, but you could probably get away with, you know, paint canning this if you wanted to. Um, you know, it wouldn't be my first choice, but you could probably come in here and do that. All right. Um, that's probably not going to look the best, but again, it would probably get the job done. Anyway, how they're able to do this is they paint it in stencil on Blender. So we're going to exit out of this guy. Like I said, let's say we wanted to add just this baby blue stripe. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to cheat just a little bit and what I'm going to do let's see I haven't opened it in a while it doesn't look like so 
I'm just going to go to open and uh, got to find my template here. So I'm going to open my <clears throat> my Nike template that for the uniform and what we're going to do is open this guy like I said this is just how I do it because it's nice and easy and it's really it's kind of a cheat so I come in here and I'm just going to open all the things we've already got a nice little stripe in here okay so what I actually have done What I've actually done in the past is I will take this guy right here and uh, I'll save it as a PNG. It's a nice little easy stripe. So, um, and, and if you go through the other the other uniform templates, they've already got some other better stripes. This is just a solid stripe. But if you wanted a three three stripe uh, three stickers or whatever that that would totally work as well. So, um, so PNG. I'm just gonna put this in here. Helmet stripe. Save it to my desktop, and then I'm just gonna exit out of all of this. Oh, it's gonna give me this one for the PNG format option. Just click OK. That's fine. And then I'm gonna exit out of all of these. And I don't, I no longer need the jersey template anymore. So we're gonna do that. Um, I'm gonna, I've got my helmet stripe right there. So we'll open this guy back up. Okay. So you could get real fancy. You could come in here and use the pen tool and make your stripe. We're not gonna do that. Um, instead, what I suggest that you do is let's say this is what you wanted I would come up here and you're gonna go to save a copy save on your computer and then you're gonna save it as a target file TGA alright save it to your desktop just to make it really easy I've already saved this once before I'm gonna copy over it just to make it easy for me and save already exists yes that's fine. 32 bits, that's totally fine. And okay. All right, so that's step one. Um, and we're going to open our PNG of the helmet stripe. Where is that guy? There it is. So we're going to open this guy. And what I want to do is go ahead and color the stripe the right color. In fact, let's make this a UCLA gold. I don't have UCLA gold's UCLA's gold color, so let's uh, let's just put that guy in there. Um, this seems. Like it's legit, but it looks a little sus to me, so that does not look UCLA gold, but okay, I'll take it. It's fine. So we'll copy and paste this guy into <clears throat> Oh, there we go. Paste and okay. All right, so now we'll just paint can this real fast. Boom, done. And just to make it really simple, let's just move this to the middle and let's uh, let's make the canvas way smaller. I hate when I do that. 
It'll get there eventually. And we're almost there. And bingo. Alright, so... Put that guy right in the middle. Alright, that makes it a little more functional. So, we'll just save. There you go. Okay, so you got your helmet stripe. We can close out of that now. So now we're going to open up Blunder. And F-150 Super Duty Uniform Viewer from Myth on revamp. Just open that guy up. And then what I like to do is just delete all of this stuff. Um, just click uh, Delete Hierarchy. Delete Hierarchy. Delete Hierarchy. Open up this guy. Delete Hierarchy. So now you got your helmet. Alright, so you come in here. If you click on it, if it's the first thing you click on, you see right here, helmet material, base color. You can go to open and go to desktop. And at the bottom, you'll see your TGA file, open image. Okay. And so right now, that's what we've got here. And you'll notice right now that there is a um, slight problem. This is the, when you create the TGA file, <clears throat> if there's an alpha channel as part of the original file, it will block that alpha channel out, okay? Which isn't necessarily a problem, but it could be depending on if you wanted to see where things you know, lined up, or if you wanted to see exactly how something looked. So, anyway, in my case right now, this is totally fine. It's not really an issue. Um, but you got the UCLA helmet there, so you can see each of those. And so, just flip it around each time. There you go. Okay. So, we want to add the stripe. Um, what I would do is then go to shading and if you zoom out, you can see that guy right there. So that's what we want right there. But sometimes something about the way Blender works, I have issues with but they're not working right, just to be honest. So I usually come into this tab and I go ahead and click delete. I delete it and then click on that guy and I will usually add the helmet material again. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Okay. So you just, if you click add and then go to texture, sorry, add texture, image texture, and then it brings up this box. And then just click open uh, desktop and find your TGA again. And there it is. And then you want to just connect the dots from base color to there, and then you'll see it matches up right there. 95% of the time, you don't even need to do this. I was having some sort of issue. It kept saying that I was having an issue, and it wasn't connected. So I just usually come in here and fix that. Um, so then if you go to Texture Paint, here's where we're at. All right. Um, looks like this has already kind of come with a, with a different texture on there. I am honestly, I haven't played with this yet. I don't know how it works, but I'm sure somebody else smarter than me could figure it out. But you'll see you've got two windows here. So the first thing I like to do is... You'll have you'll be on this first little uh, menu here on the right. I like to make sure that this part is clicked, and go to open, 
go to your TGA file once again. And that guy loads up in there. Um, to be honest, I didn't anticipate that loading up right there. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I, I see what I did. So you, you load this guy here and it can go here. Or, or there will be a, typically there's an option up here to where you can open that as well. And you just click on it, open it. There you go. Just click the little folder, and then I can just go down here and click that TGA file, and it would open up. You have to have this guy on the left. Well, you don't have to, but it tells you where the uh, that you're actually saving it, and that it's being that it's actually taking place. That, that the changes are actually taking place. So then. You will come to this little globe looking guy and you'll open here, go to your desktop and TGA. And so you'll zoom out and sometimes this guy is all flipped around, not really sure why, but there he is right there. And so now we're zoomed in. Let's see if we can. There we go. Okay. So you could. You don't have to use this just for helmet straps. You can use this for any of your logos. Keep that in mind. Okay. So now we're all set up. Now we got to go to the checkerboard here. We're gonna go to open, and we're gonna go to desktop again. And helmet stripe is right there. So we've got our helmet stripe. I like to then go up to the little wrench up here and brush settings. You can see that's a really big brush right there. We don't need that. I'm going to take this out to, oh, about 25. You can see how much smaller that is now. And then I usually leave the blend as mix and you want to make sure that this says stencil not tiled so make sure you do that so then I'll do reset transform image aspect and then as soon as you come in you'll see your stripe is right there you move the stripe by holding the right right uh, mouse button down and then by holding shift and the right button and then scrolling inward your stripe gets smaller so the tough part of this is you there, there's no real good guide other than the, the grid lines over here but you end up having to eyeball a lot of this um, which is not my favorite part but I think for the most part on all the helmets I've made so far I've been able to make it work pretty pretty well I typically just go slow take it you know a little bit at a time and we can do okay so that's almost darn dead center so what I'll do <clears throat> if you look over here right now obviously this moves over but if you watch over here you'll see the stripe start coming in as I start painting it so now I'll use my left button and I'll swipe and there it is. It started popping up right there. I don't like this uh, stroke type. That's the line. I like to use the dots. Um, other people I think have seen airbrush or use airbrush. I like the dots. That's just me. Not, you know, to each their own. So I can do here. And I can just swipe. And it's, if you see it, it looks like it's kind of changing color just a little bit. And then I like to just double check, make sure I hit every square inch of this thing. And then, boom. So now we're halfway. So what I would advise you to do, just leave that stripe there. And, okay. So now... Whoop. 
Oops, wrong way. So you got your stripe there. Your your zoom level should stay the same, but what you may have to do is just move this guy over just a shade. And it pretty well lined it up perfectly. So now I'm just gonna start up again. And I'm gonna stop just before I get to the edge there just so I can make sure that it lines up perfectly and that I don't paint the um, face mask, which I'm dumb. It wouldn't matter if I paint the face mask because there's no layer in there. But easy way to fix that is just take the face mask off. Um, and then there you go. And it's painted, okay, so now if I take that away, you can see it's painted. And okay. And so if I wanted to, what I can do here is hold this guy down. I can look at what that looks like. Okay. Not my best helmet ever, but not a bad stripe per se. So now. We need to save that, right? We made a bunch of changes, so we need to save it. So click image, and oh, I said earlier, if you click the folder that you can open this, I'm not sure if that option's there prior to opening this. So if you can't figure it out, just click on image and just go to open, you can open that image. But we don't need to do that now. Now we need to save it, so I'm just gonna save. And you see down here at the bottom, it has saved it. So we can now exit out. If you want to save this, I would obviously save it as something else so that you don't overwrite the you know base uh, Blender file so that you have a different copy of it. So I'm not going to save it for now. But then now what you're going to do is bring up your file again. So I can open go down here find my tga file good and honestly from here you can see that's a real nice stripe you can leave this as is um what i like to do is go ahead and make a new alpha there's already if you look at this if i got rid of the alpha or i'm sorry if i get rid of the rgb file the alpha does not have the helmet stripe in there now so what i can do is make a new alpha it's really easy to do click your little magic wand click in the helmet stripe area and then now on this specific helmet there was a white bumper to be honest i'm not sure that it really matters if you include the white bumper um in this file i i didn't think that uh, that it mattered to have this section or even this section here with the hardware as part of this because at the end of the day you still have literally this means nothing the hardware section and then at the end of the day you still have the bumper um, file uh, which you know which I can open and show you guys but you're going to have the bumper file so this doesn't make any sense to me while this is even in here but when you do the magic um, magic wand if you need to sometimes tolerance I'll, if you want if you keep an eye here if I were to change that to say 80 a lot of times here let me deselect real quick if I were to change the tolerance to 80 and then do it you see how some of this doesn't look quite right it doesn't really look like it it all kind of got selected and that's really hard and then like the 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 american flag doesn't look right the pac-12 logo looks kind of off so what i like to do sometimes you can do it with 50 i just like to keep my default at 10 it makes it nice and easy so deselect select see how much better that selects that and obviously if you need to come in here and make a little bit of some changes you can i I, honestly, I'm not real picky on the warning sticker. I know some people are, but if you really wanted to, you can come in here with your quick selection tool and uh, make it maybe a little bit smaller. And then I believe it's 
if you hold alt yes if you hold alt and then just do a real small click you can you can subtract the selection just a little bit I got a little too much there but I can like edge around that and then it's fine you know so that looks pretty good I usually come in here and make sure this looks pretty good which it does to me and so so you've got that selected so what you do is you'll come over here and if you notice there's a little button down here you just click that guy boom alpha one and the majority of everything in here is white just uh, both of these are white so if you did it wrong let's say you accidentally inverse selected all of this and then did an alpha channel you would see everything is black and then the the details are white that's not right you you want whatever you want to be transparent which is which are the details because you want the helmet to have that gloss or matte look or chrome look or whatever it is you're trying to do um <clears throat> So, so you want that to make sure that the details are black, which means they're transparent. So I'm going to get rid of the Alpha 2, drag that to my trash can. This was the original Alpha channel. Boom. And now you'll see if I get rid of that. Boom. There it is. You've got your UCLA logo. Um, you've got the stripe and all that stuff. I guess one part of it that I did miss was... Uh, the little pieces of the UCLA logo, but that's actually very easy to fix. Let me get this guy. Um, there you go. Oh man, I did too much that time. Just make this guy a little bit smaller, make it three pixels, and then... So I could select that, and then go back in and refine it just a little bit. And again, I'm, I'm pretty picky, you know, to each their own. You don't have to be as picky as I am with this stuff. But if you did your alpha channel already, I mean, shoot alpha channel is easy to make all you gotta do is come over here and do that and uh oops looks like i forgot to inverse it so inverse it back delete this guy make another alpha there we go so alpha three so we'll get rid of alpha two and whoops and there you go so now, oh man, forgot to do the left side. So it doesn't matter. You guys get the point. Um, so what you would do now, this is a TGA file now. So you're just going to come up here, save copy, save on your computer. Um, and then I'll just come up here, go to Intel TextureWorks, desktop, save. Um, let's do this. Um, yeah, we'll do that. We'll just save over that. Save there. Auto generate. Color and alpha. Boom. You're done. That's it. That's all there is to it. You guys can then feed that into your um, into the uh, AST file, and then and then that's it. That's that's all there is to it. I think you'll notice that all your stuff looks really really clean. Um, I know some people can be really picky and they want like the additional transparent layer on top of some of their logos and stuff to really give it that true sticker feel. To tell you the truth, I haven't really figured that out yet. I'm not sure, you know, how you might go about doing that, but you can always make helmets the old fashioned way. You can just open your DDS and put your logos in there and, uh, I wouldn't distort them too much. I would just put them on there and, and let them ride. A lot of times, you know, in the old days, I used to just throw in a mascot head on there and it looked completely fine. I could barely notice that it looked ever so slightly off. And when you're in the middle of playing a game, 
you can't tell. So, um, guys, do what you love to do. Make it look good if you want to. Take the easy way out if you want to. It's all a game. Everybody's there to just be creative and have fun. So make sure you do whatever you want. And um, uh, give a follow and subscribe to Big Country Gaming. And I'll be popping around and revamped with uh, with this. And, and um, the biggest thing before I head out... Um, <clears throat> I just want to give a special thanks to a couple guys who helped me learn how to do all of this. Um, they were really, you know, super helpful for me. Um, Cramp is one of them, and V-Neck Posse is the other one on Discord. They uh, pretty much taught me everything they know as far as the the um, Blender stuff goes. So, uh, special shout out to those guys. But, alright guys, enjoy. Have a lot of fun with it and um, stay tuned for more.